proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the personnel of the Air Weather Service. The story today is called Tornado Alley. It tells of Staff Sergeant Jack Nelson and the other men of Detachment 17 on duty in Tornado Alley. We'll hear their story in just one moment. If you're an ex-serviceman experienced in critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then you're in luck. The Career Incentive Act opens up new opportunities in the Air Force to veterans of all the armed forces. If you possess one of the skills the Air Force needs, you may qualify for the United States Air Force and in a grade that'll be a real pleasant surprise. Right now, the Air Force needs men skilled in many important fields. So put your service-earned experience to work to your best advantage as a member of the Air Force team. Make the credit you've earned toward a comfortable retirement payoff. For complete details, write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the special prior serviceman's folder. See what a return to the service as an airman can mean to you. And remember... Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Our story today begins at Tinker Air Force Base, the big, sprawling field just outside of Oklahoma City, home of the 6th Weather Squadron. One part of the 6th Weather Squadron is Detachment 17, a self-contained mobile weather unit consisting of seven men and a five-ton truck containing just about everything that they need. Their business? Hunting tornadoes. Sure, we've been doing it for several years, Fred. You'll like it. Hunting tornadoes? Oh, it sounds crazy to me. Here I am, a tinker, just been here long enough to know how to get here from downtown Oklahoma City, and we'll get orders to move out. You know the Air Weather Service motto, choose the weather for action. Well, it works out always. I haven't even had a date yet. Don't know the local talent. <laughs> Where are we going, huh? A little place called Ashley, Kansas. And what's there? Oh, I don't know what's there now, but I know what will be there in a few days. Detachment 17, 6 Weather Squadron. In other words, us. We. You and me and Henry and four other fellows. I'll tell you what else will be there as long as you're worrying about it. Hmm? A couple of girls anyway. <laughs> So now that you try to cheer me up, what'll we be doing, huh? Well, we'll be following the tornado season. Generally speaking, it moves north with the season, advancing with the weather. This year, though, we'll start out in Ashley and stay there. But other units will be following the storms farther north. Well, what do we do while we're there in Ashley? Just about what we do here. Operator Ray Winson Station, collecting data on winds, temperatures, dew points at various altitudes, and feeding them back to the Severe Weather Warning Center here at Tinker. The same kind of work we do anywhere we go. What do you mean, anywhere you go? Well, we get around, don't we, Henry? No, I'll say we do. One year, the South Pacific for atomic test. Next year, Yucca Flats in Nevada for the same thing. When the United States sends that first space satellite out to circle the Earth, I wouldn't be at all surprised if someone shoots us out into space in advance to test the weather. <laughs> well, it seems to me your motto only tells half the story. I think it should be changed. Well, I always sort of like it. Choose the weather for action. Yeah, I had a subtitle. Have weather station, we'll travel. <laughs> Another coffee, Sally? Oh, a small one, Dad. I should be getting home. Ah, so soon? <laughs> Not so soon. The dance has been over for an hour. Oh, but I didn't get to know you until the dance was almost through. Oh, if you wanted to get to know me well, I was there all evening. I know. I saw you the minute I got there. I said to myself, I'm going to enjoy my stay in Ashley, but I figured any girl as pretty as you, well, you have the entire male population of Randolph County after you. Whatever happened to your friends? 
the ones you said we were to meet here. Oh, they'll be along. I've got the jeep. Oh, one of my buddies was with a girl named Margaret. You know her? Oh, of course. Margaret Oliver's my best friend. She's the nicest girl in town. And the prettiest. Well, I'll take exception to that. I have my doubts that she's the nicest, and I know she's not the prettiest. Oh, there they are now. Margaret, over here. It's getting late, Sally. I think we should be going, huh? Uh, can I drive you home? Oh, you don't have to. Besides, I don't live in town. You, you don't live in Ashley? Well, where do you live? I mean, I, I don't live in the town. Dad's a farmer. We live on farms, of course. It's about ten miles out. You take Route 130 to a black top road about eight miles out, and then uh, turn right a couple miles. Well, I'll be glad to drive you home. Are you sure it isn't too much trouble? I can stay with Margaret. If, if I have a chance to be with you a little longer, uh, maybe I'll get up nerve enough to ask you for a date. Well, if it takes that much effort, maybe I can make it easier for you. How would you like to come for dinner some night? Dinner? At your house? Uh-huh. Yeah. Won't your family mind? Of course not. Why should they? Besides, my family consists of Dad and me and my kid brother, Albert. Oh, I'd like to meet them. When can you make it? Well, let's see. Uh, how about Friday? That be all right? Oh, I'm sure. You give me a ring just to make certain. It's 869, ring three. <laughs> answer your question, that's the way we eat here. Oh, boy. Well, I've heard this part of the country called the breadbasket of the nation. Now I know why. <laughs> Wait till I write home about the first meal I had on a farm. You've never been on a farm before? Well, don't think we always eat this way. This was just putting on an act. Starting his stuff because there was an Air Force man coming. <laughs> you should see the way she usually feeds Albert us. Albert Gray, one more word out of you, and... And one. <laughs> Besides, you can't catch me. Albert, Albert, you come right back here and help clear the table. Besides, you shouldn't tell tales about your sister. Tell tales? Isn't it the truth? The chocolate cake she made for tonight. Last three days, what have we had? Rice pudding. <laughs> I like rice pudding almost as much as chocolate cake. Ah, you're on her side, too. A guy just can't win. <laughs> well, I didn't think we could get through a meal without one outbreak. Sorry. Oh, I like it. Sounded just like home. Oh, well, where's that? Sally said you came from somewhere in the east. Yeah, Passaic. It's a city of about 60,000 in New Jersey, not too far from New York. Oh, what's it like there? Is it nice? Well, I don't know. It's hard for me to tell. I was born there. I like it. We lived in a little house in a neighborhood we'd always lived in. It's quiet and friendly. That's not the way I'd imagined any place near New York. Well, this wasn't what I expected a farm in Kansas to be like either. Before I joined the Air Force, that is, and began to get around. Well, what did you expect? Well, I thought that everything would be flat and dull and ugly. I like that. But it is really flat. No, but not flat the way I'd imagined it would be. It's hard to describe, but you can feel the space around you. You feel as though you're, well, you're on top of the world and the rest of the world slanting down away from you. That's right. And it does. When you get up in a plane high enough, you can see why. Because the Earth is a sphere. So wherever you're standing, it, it does seem to slant away. Yeah, well, now, now that you two have discovered that the world is round, maybe you can tell me about your branch of the Air Force, Sergeant. Oh, don't get me started in the Air Weather Service. Now, we work in 30 countries. There's some 12,000 of us operating five weather centrals, nine forecasting centers, 277 forecasting units, and 256 observing units. Hmm. And why are you here in Ashley? Well, we're working on a project, Mr. Gray... And we call it Tornado Alley. And we support the Service Weather Warning Center. And they forecast severe storms of all kinds, including tornadoes. Well, I listen to the weather forecast regularly. I guess every farmer does, along with other information he can get from government agencies. Mm -hmm. But tornadoes. How can you forecast tornadoes? Well, we've got a small weather station in our van. Why don't you come over and take a look at it? Yeah, I think that would be interesting. Uh, you don't mind? Mine? It would be a pleasure to show a few visitors through. May I come, too? Well, of course, Albert. I mean everybody. Uh, well, where are you located? Oh, they're over where the old Mino house used to be. Uh, you'll have to wait a couple of minutes for me. This is it. Our mobile weather station. It's just a big truck. 
What did you expect? <laughs> Something from a science fiction movie, I guess. <laughs> a lot of odd-looking equipment housed in a glass ball. Not something big and ordinary like a truck. Now, on your right, ladies and gentlemen, is the working home of Detachment 17, an M64 five-ton van which houses all the equipment and supplies for a complete little weather station. Mm. And what does that consist of? Mainly equipment to make weather observations. Surfaced wind speed and direction are measured by an anemometer. Winds aloft are observed by tracking balloons carrying transmitters which radio the conditions back to us. And we check on barometric pressure, air temperature, relative humidity, ceiling, precipitation, things like that. What do you do with the information after you get it? We collect it, analyze it, send it back to Tinker. In addition, they receive information from other stations and enter that information and our own on weather maps. Does it change so quickly that you have to keep doing it? Well, the more information we can get, the more accurate our forecasts are apt to be. Well, it all seems very complicated. No, anything unfamiliar seems complicated. I never saw you like this, Jack. I never felt like this. What's eating you? I thought everything was going fine. Friendly town. Nice, friendly girl. Oh, well, that's the trouble. Huh? Too friendly. No, 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 I didn't mean that. Uh, she, she's got me all confused. I, I never liked the girl as much as I like Sally, and I've barely met her. I mean, we haven't known each other very long. Maybe I shouldn't feel the way I do. And I'm afraid to say anything about how I feel. Wow. Well, suppose I tell her how I feel, and then she says she likes me as a friend or something, but... She hasn't known me very long. I don't want to rush her. And there's one right moment for everything, including speaking up. Well, you've got to work that out for yourself. You'll know what to say and when. Just remember, faint heart near one fair lady. Oh, well, that's what I keep telling myself. But it doesn't do any good. You are listening to the proudly we held production of Tornado Alley and our second act curtain in just one moment. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you may realize. Right now, the Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills, skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, then the Air Force wants you, and they'll put you right on the job. So for full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the folder for prior servicemen. You'll see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Detachment 17 of the 6th Weather Squadron has gone to Ashley, Kansas for Tornado Alley Project. Sergeant Jack Nelson, the non-commissioned officer in charge, has become rather friendly with Sally Gray, who lives on a farm near Ashley. Jack is at the Gray Farm now. Ah, this is nice and peaceful, isn't it? <laughs> I'm getting mighty attached to the view from this porch. After one of Sally's meals. Always should stick around, Jack. I have been fed so well since... Since I can't remember. <laughs> You used to complain about being an only child, Margaret. You didn't know how lucky you were. Oh, Sally, you complain a lot about Albert, but you don't mean it. You'd miss him if he weren't here. Oh, it would be a pleasure. It's like missing a toothache. <laughs> After all the things I do for you, the errands I run, the chores I take care of... And the mess you made. <laughs> that's, that's what my sister used to tell me. She wouldn't recognize me now that the Air Force has made me neat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to hear her talk. I could tell you a thing or two. Uh, before there's too much bickering, I've been meaning to ask you, Sergeant. I, uh, I saw there was a tornado down around Denison the other day. Was that predicted? On the nose. Now, that was one of our better forecasts. Not that they're all not good. But, uh, well, we had that one taped. We outlined areas where tornadoes were likely to occur, and Denison was smack in the middle. Uh, just how accurate has your tornado forecasting been? Well, for the past two years, we've made more than 200 tornado forecasts annually and have had three busts each year. Busts? Now, busts are when we predict severe weather and there isn't any. We were right to some extent approximately 98.6% of the time. That sounds very impressive. Uh, how, how much warning were you able to give? Well, the average was about six hours before the storm hit. That sounds good. That should give people plenty of time to take cover. Yeah. 
How did this whole business start? Well, it began in 1948 with a couple of men. We use what is known as the Forbush-Miller forecasting method. Mm -hmm. And the two men were Major Ernest Forbush and Captain Robert Miller. And now Lieutenant Colonel Forbush is commander of the 29th Weather Squadron, and Major Miller is chief of the Severe Weather Warning Center. They hadn't been at Tinker very long, and the forecast for the day had predicted thunderstorms in the vicinity. But at 2200, a violent twister raked Tinker Air Force Base from one end to the other causing more than $10 million worth of damage to Air Force property. Yeah, I think I remember that. It was one of the worst Oklahoma ever had. That's right, sir. Well, Major Forbush and Captain Miller were kind of abashed. Here they were, making weather forecasts, and their own base gets hit. And so for the next few days, they went over weather records like mad, trying to find what conditions were present that day and on other days in other places where there had been tornadoes. Like a doctor looking for symptoms of a disease. That's right. Only they were trying to figure what were the symptoms of a tornado. Tornadoes always start the same way. And they knew that roughly the same conditions could mean a thunderstorm was coming or a hailstorm or a tornado. But what was the difference? What triggered an ordinary thunderstorm into a destructive tornado? That was the problem they were trying to solve. And they didn't have very long in which to solve it. Why not? Did the Air Force give them a time limit or something? I should have thought it would be worthwhile if these men had come up with the answer any time. Well, it would have been. But you have to realize that they weren't just starting as weathermen. Well, they were both veteran forecasters. Anyway, by the morning of March 25th, five days after the tornado had hit Tinker, they had reached a preliminary conclusion. And turning from their research to check the situation for the day, they were amazed to find conditions ideal for another thunderstorm on the way and upper air disturbances that according to their new theory, put central Oklahoma in line for another tornado. So they were faced with a problem. <laughs> I should think so. They say lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place, and neither does a tornado very often, and for the same reason. They don't have to. <laughs> the place isn't there anymore. <laughs> say, we never thought of that. But you can see their dilemma. It was crazy to think that Tinker would get another tornado five days after the first one. But according to their formula, that was what would happen at about 1800, uh, 6 o'clock that evening. Well, they could always play it safe and issue the warning. Well, you see, if they put out a tornado warning, it would mean the government would spend thousands of dollars, not to mention all the work involved, moving planes and other property to shelters. And if there were no storm, this would be wasted money and effort, and they would be a target for criticism as well as a lot of kidding. Now, on the other hand, if they didn't issue a warning and there was a storm, well, you can see. So what happened? You can't leave us hanging there. I could, but I won't. Well, the weather seemed fine that morning, but they issued their warning. The weather still seemed fine, but a lot of men worked hard and fast, and everything at the air base was made secure. And by three in the afternoon, thunderstorms began to form in southwestern Oklahoma. A little before six, the storm had come over Oklahoma City. A few minutes after six, right on schedule, a black funnel dropped from one of the low-hanging clouds and a tornado ripped across Tinker Air Force Base, the second one within a week. Only this time, the damage was negligible because the warning had been issued and precautions had been taken. And so they lived happily ever after, with the world beating a path to their door. And so they spent the next several years proving and refining their theories, which is what the Severe Weather Warning Center is still doing and what we're helping to do. You see, a tornado remains one of nature's most unpredictable manifestations and one of its most powerful. You know, Sally, that young sergeant of yours, he's got something to him. Nice. Isn't he? Uh, anything between you two? I mean, uh, he likes you. Does he? Sure. Can't you tell the way he looks at you and everything? <laughs> he's a fine young man and really dedicated to his work, too. Isn't he? Any word from Tinker yet? Not a sound. You know, if I were a sailor, I'd say I'm afraid we're in for a bit of a blow. How about that latest report for Tinker? Fred's working on them. Should have them in a minute or two. We show a storm to the southeast. Chaffee Air Force Base shows it to the northwest. Tinker should have a couple of other fixes. Should be able to pinpoint us. Mm. Well, something's up for sure. Fred, where are your figures? Coming right away. Reports coming in from all over. 
Here it is. Tinker says it's ideal for tornado conditions. A flow of warm, moist air moving north, a layer of dry air for it to meet, and more moist air above. Wet bulb freezing level, 8,500 feet. Strong wind core at 14,000 feet. Tornado warnings out for this area of state. At this rate, would hit Ashley at about 1,700. It's about four hours. We'll have to watch. That's pretty definite now. We're directly in the path as projected. The storm front's advancing right on schedule. And the way I see it, conditions to form a tornado should be almost perfect, just west of Ashley. Oh, where'd you come from? Come over to see if you were all right. Anything I can do? Just get yourself to a good, safe place. Oh, there's a good scare hole within 100 yards of here. One in the old Minnow farm, remember? Oh, that's right. You showed it to me once. So you know, that gives me an idea. You'd better get into it. We may not have much time. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to be working very hard in a few minutes, if any trouble develops. You mean you pick up all your equipment and leave? No, we'll have to make extra upper air soundings. Oh. I don't think there's much time. You see those low clouds? Mm -hmm. All right, men. Let's button up any loose equipment. Storm's coming from southwest to northeast. Let's get that balloon up. Oh. They work fast. Just like that. Well, they've been preparing to do that for some time. Oh, you're not on the crew. No, no, I'm relief man for this run, so I decided to stay and try to get some pictures for air warning service. I was going to look for a cyclone cellar until you reminded me there was one nearby. Now, will you please go home? I have work to do. I'm staying with you. Look, honey, look at this. Can't you see? Can't you see what's coming? Better than you can. Would you let me go in a storm like this? Look, will you... All right, all right, you win. Where's that scare hole you were talking about? Over here. Come on. Keep going. I'm right with you. Want me to run interference? Running interference won't help. Just hold on so neither of us will blow away. Don't worry. I'll never let you go. Why, Jack? You mean it, it takes the elemental forces of nature to bring out the best in you? <laughs> don't tease. I mean it. If we don't get blown away, that is. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to tease. Just I've been waiting for you to say something like that. Well, I've been wanting to say something more than that for a long time. I... You all right? I'm all right. Just a bit of limb breaking off the tree. Oh, thought it was something hitting you. Where's the shelter? Right ahead. See? Pull up the handle. And there's a step. All right. You get down there right away. What are you going to do? I'm going to stay up here as long as possible and try to get some pictures. If it's just a high wind, I can stand it. If a real tornado forms, I'll see it in time to get inside. <laughs> Those doors may pop off, you know. I've been heard, I've heard of the suction being so great that... People will hold out of the storm cellar. Oh, I have too, but that doesn't all the things. Come on, get down there. I will, Jack. When you do. Oh, listen, will you... All right, never mind. Just watch out because I can't look in all directions at once. And I don't want something hitting you. I'll watch. Jack, look. Listen, come in. Oh, I've always heard about the oppressive feeling before a storm like this. I've never thought it before. Now I know what they mean. You know, if you weren't here with me, I'd feel as though everything were terrible. I'm here. Oh, thanks. Look how low those momentous clouds seem. Menacing enough by themselves and all bunched up, not in smooth layers. Look at that. There it goes, Sally. Huh. It's like a long black rope hanging down, swaying from the clouds. I've heard. I've never seen anything like it. No, neither have I. It certainly is acting through the form. It doesn't look as though it would do any harm. No, no, not from here. You know the strength of the winds at the outside of the funnel have been estimated at more than 500 miles an hour? Oh. And the suction inside the funnel. You said people have been picked up out of cyclone cellars. Pullman cars have been lifted right up off the tracks. A house just seems to explode. I, I know all that. And I'm afraid because I've heard so much about him. But it, it still doesn't look dangerous. It's, well, it's awe-inspiring, I guess is the word. It doesn't seem to be moving. I know, I know. That's bothering me, too. Listen. The fact that it doesn't seem to be moving means that the tornado is standing still. That happens sometimes, though not for long. Or else, it's coming right at us. It is. Can't you see it? It's getting bigger, and... I'm going to stay out here until the last second. No, come down in the shelter with me, please, now. I will, but if it keeps coming this way, it won't be long. Jack, please, it's coming right at us. Get down there, will you, Sally? Sally, look. Look, it's lifting. It's going to pass right over it. But it's lifting off the ground, right over our head. Look, the bottom of the funnel must be 100 feet up now, and it's still climbing. Oh, it's 
gone. Did you see that, Sally? Right over us. I saw it. It was like looking in the inferno. That huge wall of black cloud, a regular funnel of cloud, it, it must have been nearly a hundred yards across as it passed over us, just black inside. Like darkest night, except for the lightning flashing inside it, lighting it up from one side to the other. It was terrifying. But I'm glad I saw it. Well, I'm glad. Uh, Sally, you know, I was so interested. I took one picture, forgot to take any more. That's what you get for taking a girl along with you when you worked in. Take her along? I couldn't shake her. Did you want to? Now that the twister seems to have passed, I can go home. Not on your life. I'm getting rather attached to the steps of this scare hole. That's all. Just attached to the steps. Well, uh, and what's on them? I mean, to you. Well, you know that. Even if I did know that, I might like to hear you say so. I'll be saying it for the rest of my life, Sally. My, you are a nerd. Can't stand high winds. That tornado really did you in. Oh, I'm unnerved, all right. Finally lost my nerves. Or I've got enough nerves or something to tell you what I mean. That's nice. And I think you do mean it. They lie. The men of the Air Weather Service are searching, searching out the mysteries of nature for the betterment of man. Their function makes flying safer and more dependable for the Air Force. And in so doing, they are solving some riddles finding solutions that help Americans to handle Tornado Alley. Many times a man is skilled in a particular job, yet he's unable to find a use for it. Has this happened to you? Are you a service veteran with a service gained skill that's just going to waste? Well, if you are, then you listen, because you may be able to put that skill to work as a member of the United States Air Force. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all the armed forces. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, you can put that experience to work in the Air Force and do so at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. You've earned credits toward a valuable retirement income. So protect that initial investment. For full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. Now, remember, that's called the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>